I returned to my family kitchen for the first time in over two years. Once my rubber sole hit the hard tile, I'm right back at that family fiesta we had. I was helping my older brother AJ with the entrees. That day I picked the cilantro leaves off the stem, let them fall into the bowl of unmixed guacamole. AJ had opened the can of refried beans. He yelled over the chatter of the guests, Bro, take the cheesecakes out. I walk over to the oven, open it up. It's empty. My family joins me in the kitchen, dressed in black. We are here to mourn the loss of AJ. I close the oven and hug my mother. We chat. I cannot hear her. I will not be able to talk before my breakdown at the funeral. Until then, my mind fades in and out of memories I hold close to my heart. While my mom cries, I hold her. I realize I have not eaten since I got on the plane. I decide an egg will do. As the egg fries, I chop an onion and let my mind wander back to happy times. We learned to cook from our old Marie calendar. Sticky cover, pages ripped. Being the eldest and literate, AJ was in charge of reading off the recipe. I followed his instructions to the dot. As we matured, so did our skills, though I was never able to keep up with him. He always made it a point to beat me. He could turn anything into a competition, even cooking dinner. My inner self was too afraid to bake cakes without him. I knew mine wouldn't be as good. I rarely tried. As the memory turns sour, the egg sizzles. The egg is hard to eat. I take a break and walk to AJ's room. The stench and darkness are familiar. I open the blinded window to circulate the stagnant hair. The room is cramped. Piles of clothing and paperwork pour out of every nook and cranny. I need to clean it. It's my room now, anyways. I avoid his desk and search for baby pictures. I clean out his closet and I find 30 pounds of protein powder. I hold back the tears and laughs as I visit our high school cells bulking up with this chocolate concrete. Morning before finals, AJ poured the protein shake in on with his coffee and shook the travel mug to hell. Brown splotches of paste splattered the off-white walls that surrounded our kitchen. I was furious at the offense, but I did nothing to speak up. It would only start a fight and delay his departure. I took a moment from eating my cereal to witness my adolescent brother down 16 ounces of brown fluid in less than a minute. He burped at me with brown teeth and ran out the door. I laugh as much as I can in this bit of relief from the wake. Small victories. I lift the protein bags up and out of the pile of the clothes they hid in. I went to the kitchen to mix myself a drink. It took a year for me to finish one bag of powder, what would have taken AJ a mere month. While scanning the pantry for Nesquik, I spot a bag of red chili flesh perched high above the cans of bread, a plastic container with AJ written across. And now I'm mad at a dead man. I hated those chili flakes. He put them on everything, pizzas, noodles, chicken, under flakes of chili, sriracha, and wasabi. Those red devil dots spoiled every meal we shared. It was a weekly occurrence. It got to a point where meals were eaten in separate rooms. I dumped the flakes in the trash can. I stared into the trash to wallow in my grief for a while. I didn't want anything to do with him. The happy memories are so few and far between, scattered in between screaming matches and silent treatments. I have to let go of them of the shouting car rides, when I was angry, and he was drunk. Richie, please, just get me out of the fucking car, I gotta go. Mom told me to pick you up, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Richie, you don't fucking stop right now, I'm jumping out of the fucking car. You can kill yourself later, but you can't tonight. The car ride from the bail bonds, the car ride from the hospital, the road trip up to Los Angeles when he missed his train. They only exist to me now, and they do me no good. Too many painful memories were meant to become funny stories of setbacks that almost got the better of us. A song tells me to never remember the pain I have known. The song Father of Mine by the band Everclear. I sing every word, replacing father with brother. I cry into the tr kitchen trash can. My parents give me space to grieve alone. My eyes shift back to the pantry. When this song is over, I will make things better. I need a happy memory. I dig deep, far back into my childhood. My first fiesta, the cheesecake slice. I move away from the trash and back into the pantry. 
Where's the recipe? Still written down in that old cookbook my I'll believe the past of my father. The cookbook that six tucked underneath the kitchen, above the microwave. It's a standard recipe. Cream cheese, graham cracker, vanilla extract, and the rest. AJ had a special technique of cooling the cakes in the fridge with wet towels so that the cheese underneath would remain soft and gooey while the top layer was firm and unmarked. Not only that, but the man could bake six cakes at once, each one perfect. Consistency is a pillar of good cooking. I crack open the book. It fell on me, love. From there, I can find the cheesecake recipe easily. A simple procedure. The whole thing takes up a quarter of a page. Bake time is four hours, with a cooling period that could take all night. I went through the motions. We didn't have the ingredients necessary. I continued regardless. I lose myself in the routine. I say my goodbyes to my brother in my head as I prepare him one last cake. I feel his presence as I create, in my heart and my soul. I break open the imaginary cream cheese and drop it into the mixer. I feel a force pushing me to hustle. I hesitate, yet I sense someone guiding me. I move quickly through the empty kitchen. A familiar feeling rolls over me as we bake together again.